For each of us, early childhood was freedom incarnate. The world was new. There was so much to be explored, so much within us to express, so much energy within us to unleash. Then, not long after, everything went wrong. With each child that is born in this world, as he emerges from young childhood, everything will go wrong. It matters not if he is born into a healthy family, an unhealthy family, a religious family, or a non-religious family. The only way that it may not go wrong is if he is raised by lions or wolves. Then he has a chance. There isn't the slightest exaggeration in what I have just written. A human being's life is a mess. It is heap of beliefs, notions, compulsions, anxieties, responsibilities, and entanglements. It would be one thing if this was one part of his life, while the majority of his life was freedom. Even that would be insufficient, as I do not subscribe to the notion of not having it all. But the truth is that this is all a human being's life is. It makes no difference how wealthy or successful he is. His life is a heap of beliefs, notions, compulsions, anxieties, responsibilities, and entanglements. The reason that he is not outraged by this is because he doesn't know a single person for whom this isn't true. This is perfectly evidenced by the fact that those who read my discourses sometimes comment, do you know anyone who has achieved such things? Somewhere along the way, our life lost its sacredness. Somewhere along the way, life turned into a chore. Somewhere along the way, we died. And the mind is the only thing within us that lives. The mind has become our surrogate. And in our absence, it set the house on fire, killed the livestock, and took us hostage. Understand that we are nothing but slaves. We do nothing that is independent of the mind. The mind likes, we do not. The mind hates, we do not. Foolish people picket in the street against governments and financial institutions, demanding freedom. When it is the mind that is picketing all along, if they were wise, they would picket against their own mind. For it is the most ruthless slave master the world has ever known. It controls our sleep. It controls our every waking moment. It infiltrates our dreams. I have never in all my life seen a free human being. And I will not tell you that I insist upon becoming free, that I won't take it anymore, and such things like that, because that would be motivational. And if I allow myself to become motivational, I become taken by the motivation and lose sight of the freedom that I am creating for myself. Cleverness and insincerity are loud. Seriousness is quiet. Seriousness is a product of life-shaking realizations. When one sees that his entire life is on fire, he begins to truly see. All that was once pomp and motivation disappears. And all that is genuine and emergent within him comes to the surface. Is the sky falling? Dear friend, the sky fell a long time ago. It fell while we were asleep and we have been asleep for eons. When we emerge from slumber, we see the shards of glass, the shrapnel, the smoke, the devastation and destruction, the complete and utter absence of freedom. Domestic life is nothing but an endless series of chores. It is an endless exercise in damage control. It is akin to the cartoons we watched as children. The character would plug one leak with his hand, then another would sprout, and he would plug that one with his other hand. Then another leak, and he would plug that with his foot. Then another, and he would plug that with his other foot. Then another, and he would plug that with his mouth. And he would become filled with water and explode. Look outside your window. Neon lights, store signs, cars running here and there to fulfill their chores, people standing in lines, men cleaning the streets, airplanes flying people here and there. It is a frantic set of obligations that give man nothing but a few pence and a few milliseconds of relief of having satisfied the mind's endless compulsions. From around the world, I receive letters, 
postcards, emails, and Twitter messages, asking me how to be more happy and free, asking my advice about relationships, performance, success, peace, and concentration. How can I respond to such things? Every response that I give is utterly irrelevant unless the human being who submits the question sees that his life is on fire. Once he sees the devastation, once he sees it from his heart, the quality of the questions change. It is only once he rises in the field of devastation that he stands any chance. But because he does not, his demand has created a supply, an endless supply of institutions erected precisely for those who are unserious, an endless set of prescriptions and methodologies that emerge from the noxious fumes of incense. Meditation, gurus, chanting, mindfulness, silent retreats, meditation retreats, yoga classes, breathing routines, morning rituals, spiritual books and scriptures, motivational speeches, psychotherapy, anxiety and depression medications, and so on. The endless supply of such red and green pills, the endless supply of steaming potions and concoctions, is for those who have not yet felt the gravity of destruction in their lives. It is for those who seek to trade one type of enslavement for another. Instead of untangling the yarn, they seek solace in yarn of a different color. I received a lovely question on Twitter yesterday, asking me how I define freedom. Freedom is freedom from anxiety, freedom from all conflicts, freedom from involuntary thought, freedom from compulsion, freedom from every sort of need, freedom from emotional turmoil, freedom from a roller coaster existence. This makes a human untouchable by anything. His days are no longer about hope, ups and downs, goods and bads, emotional upheavals. Every day is pure freedom, the freedom to roam under blue skies as the eagles do. I often watch the eagles. Recently, I sat in my hotel room, looking out the window and recording an eagle flying. He glided left and right through a pale blue sky. He had nowhere to go, because somewhere inside of him, he was fully invested with the understanding that he had already arrived.